Hey there, and welcome to another episode of All Things Cloud. In this demo, we're going to have a look at a Windows 11 autopilot enrollment, where the user is not going to sign in with a username and password combination, but something that's called temporary access pass in Azure. So we're going all passwordless in this demo. But before we continue, let's start with uh, creating a demo user account for the session. And um, a good thing to note here is that this user account is going to have a randomly generated password, which is going to be 15 plus characters long. Uh, nobody knows. So assign the license is needed for at least the Intune device enrollment and you're ready to go. But before we continue, also make sure that the authentication methods you have available for your users in Azure Active Directory is set up correctly. For this demo, it's about FIDO2 security key and the temporary access pass. So make sure that those two are available for your users. There are a couple of settings you can configure for both these authentication methods. So make sure to check them out, configure them to your likes and needs, and then follow along this demo. Now for the temporary access pass settings, there are a couple of things that are important. So click on configure and then edit and make sure these settings are to your needs as well. One of the most important things here to configure or not is the require one-time use only option. If you leave this as is, then you still have the option to require one-time use while you create a temporary access pass for your user account. Now let, let's switch back to the account of Jesse and see what authentication methods she has available. So I'm looking at Jesse's account right now, and obviously the authentication methods is going to show an empty screen because nothing's configured yet. Click on add authentication method here and select the temporary access pass option. Now here you have the option to set a activation duration, which is going to be the time allowed to use this temporary access pass. And for demo purposes, I am going to configure the one-time use option. That means that Jesse can use this temporary access pass only once. Flip the switch and click on OK to complete. Now make sure that you take a note of the temporary access pass here because as an administrator, this code is the one you want to provide your users. Uh, there's no password. Uh, it's only about the temporary access pass they need to know. Now let's fire up a uh, Windows virtual machine and have a look at the autopilot device enrollment process. Now, normally when you do an autopilot enrollment, the user signs in with a username and a password. But like I said before, there is no password. So we're going to sign in with a username and the temporary access pass to enroll this device. And a little later on, uh, when the autopilot uh, enrollment process completes, uh, we are also going to configure Windows Hello for Business, which is going to enable us to sign in with a PIN on this device. So the temporary access pass is used once to enroll the device. You're signing in with your username and the temporary access pass. And then later on, you are going to configure at the least Windows Hello for Business to enable this user to sign in without the password on the device. Now let's first enter the temporary access pass and then click on sign in to continue. The autopilot enrollment process will continue from here on. Uh, there might be a couple of screens you see. Uh, just uh, bear with me for a couple of minutes and it will finish up quickly. I did speed up some of the parts of the video for obvious reasons. And then after the, the account setup is complete, we'll continue and configure Windows Hello for Business. Now, this is a normal autopilot enrollment process. If something goes wrong here, uh, let's say the device reboots during this process, you're not going to be able to configure Windows Hello for Business like you see here. So 
if there is an issue with your autopilot enrollment process, make sure to fix that first before you enable these kind of uh, enrollment scenarios for your users. And since this is a virtual device, the only option I have here is to set up a PIN. And after setting up Windows Hello for Business, I end up on my desktop. That's it. Now let's have a look at the sign-in options and how that process looks. When you first boot the device, you have the option to sign in with Windows Hello for Business. And that's what, what's enabling us to sign in without a password. But this Windows Hello for Business pin is only working on this device. So remember that. There are a couple of other sign-in options available for Jesse, um, like the password. And then we also have FIDO to security key option to sign in and Windows Hello for Business. We are going to set up a FIDO security key a little later on. And the password option is still available because I didn't disable the password credential provider for this device. Have I had done that, then the user wouldn't even see the password option at the sign-in screen. Now, looking at the authentication methods, uh, I can see Windows Allow for Business has been configured. So that's what I'm using here. The temporary access pass will expire or actually has expired since it was a one-time use only temporary access pass. Now, when I first sign in to portal.office.com to access Microsoft 365 um, services, um, my tenant requires to configure Windows, uh, sorry, Azure multi-factor authentication. Uh, and that's something you need to remember as well, because if you require users to uh, enable MFA and configure MFA, um, the, the, the best thing they can do is configure MFA on the device they've enrolled, because now using Windows Hello for Business, I have SSO to Azure Active Directory and can configure MFA. Um, in the event that uh, the user tries to configure MFA on another device, um, the sign-in process will require the user to sign in with a username and a password combination if there is no temporary access pass provided to the user. Okay, let's have a look at the authentication methods once, once more. Now we can see that there is a phone number configured and Microsoft Authenticator as well. So the temporary access pass is still there, but it is expiring or should expire um, immediately when, when it's a one-time use. And if it's not a one-time use, it'll expire after the set hours. Now let's switch over to a physical device and configure a security key. The security key is going to give us options like uh, signing into any Microsoft 365 services using a web browser, or sign into uh, hardware devices using the security key. Now for the demo, I'm using a Phytium Biopass K50, and that one also comes with a fingerprint scanner. It's a USB type security key, so that's what I'm choosing here. Um, the video is not about uh, showing you how to actually configure a, a, a security key. It's about showing you how easy it is to configure a security key being an end user. Now, the, the separate video shows you that I'm inserting my security key in my laptop uh, and I'll create a pin next to continue. The pin is something mandatory and you have to configure one for every security key you use. Should your uh, security key come with a fingerprint scanner, then you'll have the option to sign into devices or Microsoft 365 services using the fingerprint scanner. Um, if you don't have one, then you can sign into the device or Microsoft 365 services using the pin you created here. Right after creating the security key, um, you can give it a name which is recognizable for yourself. Uh, that's what you're going to see when you sign into your portal and have a look at your uh, security information and sign in options. But is that easy? The, the security key is configured now and ready to use. But um, since this one does come with a fingerprint scanner, I'm going to configure one right now. The only thing you have to do there is go to your settings page. So uh, press the Windows key 
then search for security key and continue. You have the option to continue by clicking on setup security key. This will bring you to the, to the correct screen uh, where you can continue with configuring a fingerprint for your uh, device. Click on manage. And then before you can actually add a fingerprint, you will have to type in your previously configured pin before you can continue. And now if you look at the, the other video here, you'll see me pressing the fingerprint scanner to configure my fingerprint. And now I'm all set. The device is now ready and can be used on any device uh, with any browser or um, to sign into the device itself. Remember that the device does need to be Azure Active Directory joined if you want to sign in to the device using the security key though. Okay, now let's have a look at how the sign-in process looks when using a security key. Here's a, a virtual device. I've booted it and uh, on my sign-in screen, I now have the option to use the security key and it will just sign me in. Uh, if you look at the sign-in options, you can see we have password, security key, and PIN, but we'll go for the, the security key for now. After you insert the security key, you can touch it. It will scan your fingerprint and sign you into Windows. And that's it. There's one other thing I'd like to show you, and that's using a browser. We can use any browser on any device to sign into Microsoft 365 services using the security key. So this can be a bring your own device or maybe even a device that's, um, uh, that you're using at an internet cafe. You just start a browser, go to portal.office.com uh, and when it asks you to sign in with a username and password, you'll fill in your username and then choose what the option to sign in with a security key. Right after that, you'll uh, be ready to go and can start Microsoft Teams chat with your colleagues and do whatever work you need to do to get it done. I truly hope that you've enjoyed this video uh, and that you've learned something. Um, it's very easy to go uh, passwordless, uh, but you will have to think about uh, onboarding processes for your end users, for example, because there are some things that, that you need to think about. So make sure you also read the blog that accompanies this video. And until next time, thank you.